Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, now everything's already up. And I'll do more talking instead of trying to make it work. Okay, what I did show uh, yesterday, um, briefly, just to recap, I'm a VI guy, can't stand Emacs, can't stand not being able to move around that way. And I wanted to find a way, I mean, I'd seen some things of, that said that you could turn VI improved at least the latest version into more of an IDE. So I just wanted to show a little bit of what's possible, especially with a very, very nice Rails plugin that's been written by a man named Tim Pope. This is the library find. Uh, you can, uh, let's see, da -da -da. what I showed yesterday was a project window that's got all sorts of collapsible sections. You can add to it, of course, you select something on that side, it shows it on the right-hand side. Um, with a little uh, more work um, with C tags, you can dynamically also have a window. I'm, I'm making it big here. If you have a big enough screen, you can have all this up at the same time. With whatever file you're working on, you can have a nice little outline view on the right-hand side. Um, you may notice on the bottom, there's actually a, a essentially tabs. Uh, with another script that, that gives you the equivalent of tabs inside VI. Uh, the Rails plugin gives you all sorts of smart ways of finding things by model, by symbol, you know, I mean, model view, controller, whatever, by class name, by symbol. Um, so, for instance, my cursor's on the collection group members model. I just enter a simple command, goes and finds that file. Um, Generation is really easy. It works very nice with a plugin that's uh, called dbx. Um, it will look at your Rails configuration, automatically load whichever database configuration you're using now, whether it's development, test, or production. It'll allow you to explore the database, actually perform SQL directly on the database, do all these all of these things from just inside VI. And of course, um, an easy thing, what we would always want to do is create a uh, create a Rails project from scratch, goes out, does all that kind of stuff, comes up, and uh, loads you in the default file, and doing the same thing, you can give yourself your project view on the left-hand side. And then the last thing, with a little bit more work, you can use the screen, basically Windows Manager, new screen. I don't know how many people have, have used that. And you can split your window up and in this with a simple command you can end up with a tail on your development log down below. You can already start. You can see, I don't know on that middle line if people can see, you can, um, well, I'll just switch. Here. Um, you can have your, your development log, you can have your server start in the background, you can do all of this. And the nice thing about it, and you can have extra shells on the side, the nice thing about it is you can do it all remotely. You don't need it on your local machine. Um, I know we're, we all have Capistrano if you're using Rails, which is really groovy and everything like that, but um, if you're not using that and you don't have that ability with wherever you're working, this gives you a, a whole sophisticated interface. And um, I will, uh, there are definitely some quirks. Um, this is the plug-in page, and you can see if you reviews like, yes, I want to have T. Pope's babies at the bottom. Um, but anyhow, um, I will post up on the little lightning talk thing, I'll post up some files and some various different things and some things to avoid um, because Rails really isn't made for this, I mean, sorry, not Rails, VI really isn't made for these kind of separate windows.